Hello, I'm Gordon Lane, editor of CameraLabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Sony DT 11-18mm lens. Here it is, the 11-18mm. It's an ultra-wide angle lens that's designed for use on Sony Alpha digital SLRs, and I've got it mounted here on an Alpha A100 body. Now, as a DT lens, it's only compatible with cropped frame bodies, such as the existing Alpha DSLRs, but if Sony produces a full-frame model in the future, this, like other DT lenses, won't be compatible. However, it is compatible with existing Konica Minolta digital SLRs like the 5D and the 7D. And in fact, like a lot of Sony lenses, this model is in fact a rebranded and slightly modified version of an existing Konica Minolta lens. As you'll see, design-wise, Sony's put on its trademark grip on the focusing and the zoom ring here. And it feels pretty comfortable and the rings are certainly quite smooth to use in practice. But they are also quite good at collecting dust, so if that bothers you, it's something you might have to watch out for. If I zoom the lens in from 11 to 18 millimeter, you'll see that it hardly extends at all. That's about a four millimeter extension. So there's certainly no concern over creep here with the barrel falling down under its own weight. And the build quality is pretty good. It's got a metal lens mount and it's definitely a slight step up from the kit lens, although not significantly so. One thing that I would like to show you is how this lens performs during autofocus. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera here so you can have a good look. And what I'd like you to have an eye on is the actual focusing ring itself and the end section here. As I press the button, there's a few things that you should notice there. First of all, the end section of the barrel didn't rotate, so that's great news if you're using a polarizing filter. However, the actual manual focusing ring itself did rotate quite significantly, so if you're holding it, be prepared for a bit of a nudge. You'd have also noticed that most Sony lenses, it uses the autofocusing motor that's built into the body and as such it's actually quite noisy and quite slow. It's certainly nowhere near as quick and quiet as say Canon's USM or Nikon's SWM focusing motors. But the really important thing about having a lens like this is what sort of pictures you can take with it. So let's have a look at some examples in practice. To demonstrate the coverage of the 11 to 18 mm lens, we're going to start off with a picture taken with the standard 18 to 70 mm kit lens zoomed all the way out to 18 mm. So this is working at an equivalent coverage of 27 mm, and that's a fairly standard wide angle shot. Now of course the DT 11 to 18 mm offers the same coverage when it's fully zoomed in. So what we're going to show you now is what you get with this lens when it's fully zoomed out. So this picture now is taken with the 11 to 18 millimeter zoomed all the way out to 11 millimeter, and that's working at an equivalent coverage of 16.5 millimeter. And you can see that it's capturing an absolutely enormous field of view. This sort of wide angle coverage is great for capturing massive landscape views. And the other benefit is being able to place a subject in the foreground very, very close to the lens for quite dramatic effects. This photo of a tree with some mountains in the background was taken at very close range to the tree and it's allowed a really dramatic composition. This is one of the things that ultra wide angle lenses are absolutely great for. One of the other situations where an ultra wide angle lens can prove invaluable is when you're taking a picture inside a building or when you literally can't step back any further. This photograph taken inside a church shows a massive field of view compared to a standard wide angle lens. If you go over to CameraLabs.com and have a look at almost any of our galleries, you'll see a photo taken inside the same church with standard wide angle facilities and you'll be able to see that this shot is clearly much, much wider. Another subject that's familiar to the Camera Labs galleries is this yacht, which we normally photograph from a pier using an equivalent focal length of 28mm. Now this particular photo was taken with the 11 to 18 zoomed all the way out to 11 mm and therefore working at an equivalent of 16.5 mm and it simply captures a much bigger view. We've got much more of the boat in this shot and much more of the background too. And this is invaluable in situations like this where literally if you did step back any further you'd be getting pretty wet. The Sony DT 11 to 18 mm is certainly capable of grabbing some pretty dramatic looking compositions. And if you'd like to see some more examples of what it's capable of, then head on over to our full review at CameraLabs.com. Have a look at the sample images gallery and you'll see the sort of things that you'll be able to do with this lens. If you have a look at the results pages, you'll also see that it performs pretty respectably in terms of geometric distortion and light fall off. It's quite impressive, especially for an ultra wide angle lens. But it's not all good news. There is some softening in the extreme corners and again you'll see examples of that in our gallery results pages so have a look at those to see whether that's going to be an issue for you. 
This focal ratio is also relatively slow. It goes from f4.5 to 5.6, whereas most ultra wides would start at, say, f3.5 or f4. So this is a bit slower at its wide end. And it's also worth pointing out that it only offers an optical range of 1.63 times, whereas a lot of other ultra wide lenses may offer a 2 times range or even a 2.2 times range. But to be fair, when this stops at 18 mm that's where your kit lens takes over, so you're not really going to be missing out in practice. If you are interested in an ultra wide angle lens for an alpha body, this should certainly be on your list, but you should also be considering the Tamron 11 to 18 mm which looks remarkably similar to us, and also the Sigma ultra wide angle lens. These are the three that you should be comparing. If you'd like to see full results for this lens though and those extra sample images, then do head over to camerolabs.com and check out our full review.